guys! We've got a new Legends game coming out soon with Pokemon Legends ZA, but we don't have much info for it right now. In fact, we don't even know what starters we'll be getting. I think we'll be able to get a traditional starter trio to choose from, as well as multiple others in this game, plus some brand new Megas for them. Let's take a look at all of them and their potential Mega Evolutions, starting with... It's pretty much a guarantee that we'll be getting the starter Pokemon introduced in this generation. Chespin, Fennekin, and Froakie. But like Legends Arceus, I think that we'll be able to catch these Pokemon out in the wild, rather than being given them. When the original X and Y games came out, these three Pokemon were all excluded from getting Mega Evolutions. In fact, in this generation that introduced Megas to the franchise, not a single Kalos Pokemon got a Mega Evolution, except Diancie randomly and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. So needless to say, I think the original Kalos starters deserve new Megas in Legend ZA. In the location that you can find Chespin, I think you'll also be able to find or receive the Chestnutite. Once you catch a Chespin and are able to evolve it into its final form, you'll be able to use this stone to get Mega Chestnut. Chestnut is based on a paladin, a holy knight that fights and defends others in the name of honor, duty, and all things good. Mega Chestnut uses its now massive shell as a spike shield to not only defend itself, but others, pulling in any innocent person or Pokemon with its left hand. It has incredible defense stats, able to take damage from its opponent while also doing damage in return if the Pokemon falls victim to one of the shell's spikes. It's only when its opponent refuses to back down and moves on to the front of Chestnut that this Pokemon will lash out, using the sword on its arm to slash at its enemy to keep them away. Next up is the fire starter, Delphox. When this Pokemon was first revealed, a lot of fans wished that it kept the dark legging-like markings from Brakeson, going in an even more witchy direction, and incorporating the stick wand it wields to be a visible element in the design, rather than hidden in the Pokemon's sleeve until needed. I try keeping these things in mind when creating the Mega Evolution, Mega Delphox. This Pokemon no longer needs its wand to cast moves, and now uses it as a base for its broom instead. Its tail has grown large and expels powerful energy at the end that the Pokemon uses to move itself through the air, as if the energy from the Mega Stone is too much and needs to be released. Mega Delphox's psychic abilities allow it to easily remain upright while flying and still able to perform attacks at the same time. And of course, we can't forget the most popular Gen 6 starter of all, Greninja. Once you're able to get your hands on a Greninja Knight and a fully evolved Froggy Friend, you'll be able to get yourself Mega Greninja. This Pokemon retains the Water Shuriken from Ash Greninja, but like some other Mega Evolutions, Mega Greninja also receives a new physical trait in this state, Bubbles. It's regained the Bubble Scar from its pre-evolution Frogadier, and also has a cloud of them on its ankles too. Mega Greninja can use these bubbles like a smoke bomb. They multiply and expand quickly when needed to give Mega Greninja a means of escape, usually so that it can sneak up on its opponent and launch a devastating water shuriken attack on them from behind. Their speed and stealth are unparalleled. Okay, so now we're going to be getting into some real speculations with what starter trio we'll be getting at the beginning of the game. If they're not Chespin, Fennekin, and Froki, then what Pokemon could they be? We can rule out Rowlet, Cyndaquil, and Oshawa since they got regional evolutions in Legends Arceus, as well as Sprigatito, Coco, and Quaxly because we just got a whole game about them with Scarlet and Violet. So what Pokemon are the most likely candidates that are left? You've probably heard a ton of people say that Snivy and Piplup will be our grass and water starters, and I can't really argue with that. Their evolutions, Superior and Empoleon, both have major French inspirations in their designs that would make them perfect starter candidates for a Kalos game. Ken Sugimori stated that Superior is based on Lady Oscar from a manga called The Rose of Versailles. She's a commander in the Royal Guard during and directly after the French Revolution. The green mark on Superior's chest also resembles the Fleur de Lis, which is an insignia that you can find on plenty of French coat of arms. And one of its Pokedex entries may be referencing one of the old kings of France, King Louis XIV, also known as the Sun King. And then there's Napoleon, whose name seems to be referring to Napoleon Bonaparte, who was a military commander during the French Revolution and then became its emperor. The Firestarter choices aren't as obvious as Snivy and Piplup, but I personally think that Torchic could be it. And here's why. Blaziken is based on a rooster, and the Gaelic rooster is a national symbol in France, gaining a massive resurgence during the French Revolution. Interesting how Superior, Empoleon, and Blaziken all have some sort of connection to this point of time in French history. Besides this link to France, 
Blaziken actually has a special place in the original X and Y games. While we got Mega Sceptile and Swampert in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, we actually got Mega Blaziken well before that as a special event in X and Y. Players were able to get a special Torchic through an online event that held the Blazikenite. Same goes for the anime, where Mega Blaziken debuted in just the second episode of the X and Y series. What's more, we may have gotten a hint to Torchic being a starter during the Indigo Disc DLC trailer. At the very start of it, we can see each of the Hisuian starters with only one other Pokemon, Cyndaquil with Torchic, Oshawott with Piplup, and Rowlet with Snivy. Now at this point you may be thinking to yourself, Torchic can't be the starter, it's already gotten a Mega. While true, I don't think this alone rules out Torchic as an option. I mean Charizard got two Megas, so why can't Blaziken? I think in Legend ZA we'll have two Blaziconite to choose from. One that will give us the Mega Blaziken we all know and love, and another that changes its secondary typing, like how they handled Mega Charizard X and Y. Introducing Mega Blaziken X. This Mega Evolution is Fire and Flying type, which was inspired by the recent Blaziken Terror Raid event. The hair-like feathers on the back of its head now lift upward to look like wings, a reference to the pre-alpha sketches of Torchic. This Mega Evolution's design emphasizes one of Blaziken's potential inspirations, the ancient Egyptian deities Horus and Ra. The power from the Mega Stone creates a sphere of fiery energy above the Pokémon's head that alludes to certain depictions of the Egyptian gods. This sphere is barely able to keep this Mega Evolution in check, with the ends of its arms and feet bursting with fire. Let's go back to our potential grass starter, Snivy. When Mega evolved and given a superior right, this Pokemon can transform into Mega Superior. The Lady Oscar inspiration becomes more pronounced with this Mega Evolution. Mega Superior is known for diving into battle and landing a quick and precise strike against its opponent using the end of its tail, which now acts as a sharp sword. Trainers need to have a strong connection with their Superior in order to use this Mega Evolution safely. Without this, Mega Superior will attack anyone that comes near its trainer, perceiving them to be a threat to the one thing it feels bound to protect. I went for the Commander look for Superior's Mega because I wanted to save the Emperor concept for a water starter, Mega Empoleon. It gets a more pronounced Napoleon the First look, emphasizing its regality. Mega Evolution has given this Pokemon a bit too much confidence, believing it can take on any foe. Mega Empoleon waits for its opponent to take the first move. Its now increased physical defense stat allows it to take on more attacks. When a foe is able to land a blow against it though, Mega Empoleon will become enraged. It will go after whoever harmed it with relentless force, unable to control its fury. I don't think these are the last of our starters in Legend ZA. In fact, I think we have one more trio during the main game, which are... In Pokemon X and Y, trainers didn't get just one starter, but two. Early on, Professor Sycamore gives you the option to pick Bulbasaur, Charmander, or Squirtle. With the series bringing back Mega Evolution, I think we'll be getting all of the original Megas. That means we'd have a chance to get Mega Venusaur, Blastoise, and Charizard X and Y again. I always thought it was sad that Charizard received two Mega Evolutions, while Venusaur and Blastoise only got one. In Legend ZA, I want to believe that these two Pokémon will get the second Mega they deserve. Mega Charizard X changed Charizard from Fire Flying to Fire Dragon type, so I think that Venusaur and Blastoise will get new Megas with different secondary typings nice. as well. At the time of recording this, we have a Terror Raid event going on for the Gen 1 starters, and Charizard's Terror type just happens to be Dragon. So what if this event is a hint for Venusaur and Blastoise's new Mega Evolutions, being Grass Ground and Water Steel? If you give your Venusaur the Venusaurite X, you'll get this beast of a Pokémon. I think a lot of Gigantamax Pokemon designs could work well as Megas with some adjustments, and I think Gigantamax Venusaur is one of them. Mega Venusaur X uses its short but wide body to hide itself in swampy or forested areas, making it difficult for larger, stronger Pokemon to see anything but its massive flower. The top of it gives off glowing yellow spores that draw in Pokemon. When they get near enough, these spores go back into the flower, giving Mega Venusaur X power to launch a powerful Solar Beam attack. And then we have Blastoise. When giving it the Blastoise and Knight X, it will Mega Evolve into a Water and Steel type. Its body is much wider in order to hold up the two turrets on its back. The Water Blastoise typically wields has now overwhelmed it upon Mega Evolution. It can launch water from the turrets at high speeds and at incredible distances. An opponent needs to be fast enough to dodge their blasts and attack Mega Blastoise X before the turrets fire again. However, even if they get close enough to strike, 
this Pokemon has a second weapon. With the water coursing through its body, its hands themselves have become weapons. They can unleash constant, powerful blasts of water at short distances. So if the Gen 1 starters are brought back so that we can have access to all of the original Megas, that means we have one last set of starter Pokemon to cover. The only other starter Pokemon that have gotten Megas before are Sceptile and Swampert. Since we didn't originally have these Megas in Kalos, I think we could be getting them as post-game starters in this new title. Kind of like how we got a chance to get Bulbasaur or Squirtle in the Isle of Armor DLC. If Legend ZA is like Legends Arceus and allows us to have side quests from NPCs, I think going on some sort of mission with a Trico or a Mudkip as a reward would be something fun to do after the main game is all wrapped up. Once you get the Pokemon, you could then be given the Sceptileite or Swampertite. These are just my predictions, though. What starters do you think we could see in Legend ZA? And do you think any of them will get new Megas? Let me know down in the comments! Thanks so much for watching! Bye!